Most people don't know that you can use compositing to reduce your render time dramatically. And if you're not already aware of these techniques, they're super powerful and every major studio already uses them. These six techniques can literally save you thousands of hours of waiting around and I've been using these on almost every project. So if you're a compositor or a CG artist, you're gonna learn something in this video. So there's a concept that we all know is true, which is time equals money. In professional productions, it's not just about producing quality, it's about producing quality, but very quickly. And so whether you're rendering in Houdini, Blender, Unreal Engine, any 3D software you can tie together with Nuke and save massively on render time. Technique number one is to render dynamic lights separately. If you're rendering a scene where you have animated lights, sometimes it's actually better to animate the lights in compositing. In Nuke, we can change the flickering of a light in real time, which makes it super easy to match a real light flickering from a virtual light flickering. With a simple trick, we can match the flickering perfectly. So in just 30 seconds, I'll show you this technique. First, we crop into the flickering area on the jacket. We can measure the light differences using the curve tool in Nuke, which collects the intensity data. Then we create a solid constant and paste the data directly in the color. This makes the color match the flickering. But we don't want to actually change the color, so when we multiply it against the footage, we want to put a desaturation node and set it to zero. This will make sure the colors don't change, but the flickering is copied directly onto the render. Now the light perfectly flickers. For smaller detailed lights, here I'm faking these small patterns by using a variety of noise shapes with breakup and throwing the image out of focus. You can achieve this technique super easily by eroding a checkerboard and then masking it by a noise pattern. Put it out of focus and it looks like out of focus lights. If you want to go even fancier on small flickering lights, you can check out our screen effects plugin which gives you an entire library of customizable animated patterns, which is how I made some of these sci-fi console lights in the background. Technique two is to optimize your resolution for the level of detail we see. Traditionally in feature film, we're working in 2K resolution. However, for defocus shots, you can actually render half res and simply scale the image up. There are a lot of shots in films and cinematics where you don't need to see all the detail and focus, and this is where you can actually render in half res and save yourself a ton of time. Technique number three is if it's far away, make it 2.5D instead of full 3D. It's very common in matte painting workflows to do 2.5D. This means you can render one frame and project it onto some simple geometry or even a flat card and save yourself a massive amount of render time. Here I rendered only a frame instead of an entire sequence and projected it. Technique four is to freeze or blend problematic flickering. Here I created this box render. However, it's in a very metallic scene with a lot of glossy reflections. This can lead to a lot of flickering in the specular highlights, especially if you put things out of focus. This was most noticeable in the foil containers near the top. You can see it's chattering quite a bit here. So instead of rendering tons of samples, we could just project the render back onto the geometry and blend it across a few frames. If you've never seen this technique, you can check out my full tutorial on this, which is called How to Denoise CG in Post. Technique number five is if your camera only rotates, render one frame. Here we have a no pan which means the camera only rotates. We can treat this as 2D or 2.5D which means if we render one frame of our CG we can just put it on a card and then just pan down into it. This makes it look like a rendered sequence but it's just one single frame. Technique six is to mix your render engines. This is a less common technique but is really powerful for compositing workflows. You can use the path tracer to get your main render and use the real-time engine to get other aspects. Now there are a lot of things going on in this composite but I want to show you how you can mix EV and cycles and you can do the same thing with Unreal. It's the same principle. So one area in this composite that needed a bit more light and mixing cycles and EV together was basically this pole in the foreground. So I have a bit of light on the behind the camera so we can see the specular reflections and a bit of light hitting the bucket. And this was getting inky black and had no detail originally. So if we show the cycles render, so the original cycles render looks like this, which needs a lot of work because there wasn't that good of detail on it. And I was putting it out of focus anyway. So it's a good enough for a starting point in compositing. So with a little bit of edge breakup and some detail, we can make it look a little bit better, but still we're getting very, very black in this uh, region. So if I gain up a tiny bit for the YouTube video, just so you can see it, not much detail here. This is like pretty much game asset level. But keep in mind, this is gonna be thrown out of focus as well. So I knew that, so I'm not gonna waste time creating hero assets, but we can still add a bit more light to this. So even when it's out of focus, we can help it out. So this is an EV render that I rendered separately, just with the light at a different direction. I don't want to re-render and spend a whole, bu whole bunch of time on metallic surfaces, but EV can give you some decent reflections. And uh, sometimes it looks pretty real. There's actually a new ray tracer in EV as well. So pretty fast render. You can get this in like 30 seconds or a minute. And typically it looks better than just a relighting with normals. And so with the same technique, we can, we can you know, comp this up a bit, make it look much better by just getting some metallic feeling to all this, break it up a whole bunch. And then if we merge these together and then we throw it out of focus, 
we could get something like this, which is going to integrate a lot better into our CG. So, you know, that helps it out a lot versus going completely black and then we lose all the details. So we get a bunch of uh, other layers in there as well to finish up the composite and we can get something that looks uh, much, much better.